In this lesson, we're going to look at how to use the basic moves to clear fractions and decimals. And we're going to start with a little review of how to multiply integers times fractions. So, first, if we have 5 times 3 fourths, the way to do the multiplication is to multiply the 5 by the numerator of the fraction, 5 times 3 over 4, and the result is 15 fourths. Another example, 2 sevenths times 8 is the same as 2 times 8 divided by 7, 2 times 8 over 7, or 16 sevenths. Now I also would like to show you what algebraic terms look like when they have fraction coefficients. In an equation, you might see either one of these things, and they both mean the same thing. 2x, 2 times x, over 7, is exactly the same thing as 2 sevenths x. And if you're asked for the coefficient of x, in each case the coefficient is 2 sevenths. In the first case, even though it's written like this, the coefficient of x is 2 sevenths. Here's another example. If you have x over 18, that is the same thing as 1 18th times x. The coefficient of x in both cases is 1 18th. And that's true whether it's written this way or this way. Now let's look at a problem. The problem 1 half x plus 3 halves equals 10 could be solved using the basic moves, but it involves using a lot of fractions and it's easy to make mistakes with fractions. So we'd like to have a way of eliminating the fractions first and then solving a much easier problem. Now, the steps that we're going to use are we're going to find a common denominator for all of the fractions in the problem. We're then going to multiply each side of the equation and every single term in the equation by the common denominator. Then we're going to simplify the fractions so that all the coefficients are integers and then we're going to solve. Now if we look at this problem, the fractions are 1 half and 3 halves. The common denominator is 2, obviously because they're both the same. So the first step to find a common denominator is done. It's 2. The next step is to multiply each side of the equation by the common denominator. We we'll use parentheses to indicate the distributive property on the left, so we're multiplying two times each one of the terms, and 10 times 2 on the right. 2 times 1 half plus, uh, 2 times 1 half x plus 2 times 3 halves equals 10 times 2. That's where we are now. And then 2 times 1 half is the same thing as 2 over 2, that's 1. 2 times 3 halves is the same thing as 6 over 2 that's 3. So this equation can be changed to x plus 3 equals 20. We can see that the solution is 17 and if you went back into the original equation and substituted 17 for x you would find that 1 half times 17 that's 17 halves plus 3 halves equals 10. 17 halves plus 3 halves is 20 halves that's 10. So it works. Let's take a look at another example. Now in this example, there are two different denominators. So the first step, we're going to find a common den denominator for all the fractions. And in this case, the least common denominator is going to be 21, or 7 times 3. Next, we're going to multiply each side of the equation, every term, by the common denominator, simplify and solve. So here's the multiplication. You have 21 times 4 thirds y minus 1 seventh, that's the left side, equals 8 thirds times 21, which is the right side. Now we expand the left side to 21 times 4 thirds y minus 21 times 1 seventh equals 8 times 21 over 3. When we simplify the coefficient of y, 21 times 4 thirds, 21 times 4 thirds is 28 minus 21 times 1 seventh. That's 3. So we have 28y minus 3 equals 8 times 21 over 3, which is 56. And again, 
that can easily be solved in check and I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Now I'd like you to try these two problems. Please copy them into your journal and stop the video while you solve them and then you can restart the video to see the solutions. Okay, let's take a look at the solutions. On the left we see that we've used a common denominator of 3, multiply both sides by 3, distribute, simplify the fractions, and find the solution to the problem. And I encourage you to check this answer to make sure that it's correct. For the second problem, 2, 3, and 5 are the denominators. And the common denominator for 2, 3, and 5, the least common denominator, is 30. So we'll multiply each side of the equation by 30, distribute 30 times 1 half plus z plus 30 times 5 thirds equals 2 10 fifths. 30 times 1 half is 15. 30 times 5 thirds is 50. 210 over 5 is 42. We subtract 50 from each side, uh, divide each side by 15, and we get z equals negative 8 fifteenths. And once again, I encourage you to check your answer. Now, we're going to take a look at how to do the same thing, except this time to clear decimals. So, we're going to start with a quick reminder about multiplying by 10. When you multiply a number 47.3 by 10, that's the same thing as moving the decimal place one position over to the right. So, 47.3 times 10 is equal to 473. 8 and 207 thousandths, so 8.207 times 1,000 effectively moves the decimal point three places to the right so that we get 8,207. When we have decimals that are less than one, greater than zero, such as 0 0.02, um, or two hundredths, we can multiply two hundredths by one hundred to get two. And we can multiply seven, uh, or point seven, seven tenths by ten to get seven. So all of these things will help us get decimals out of equations and make them easier to solve. So let's take a look at some examples. We'll take this one first. Two tenths x plus one and seven tenths equals four and one tenth. Now we can look at that and we can see that each one of those could turn into an integer to become an integer if we simply multiplied by 10. Now the first step we're going to use is to do that, to find the term with the most decimal digits, in this case they all have one, and find the power of 10 that you need to clear those decimals. Multiply each term by the power of 10, simplify the numbers, and then solve. So We'll multiply by 10 each side. We'll distribute on the left and we'll get 10 times 2 tenths is 2, 2y, plus 10 times 1.7, that's 17. So we have 2y plus 17 equals 41. And from there, it's easy to solve. Subtract 17 from each side, divide by 2, and you'll get your answer. And I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Now I'd like you to try with these two problems. Remember that the steps are to identify what you have to multiply each equation by to clear all of the decimals, multiply each side, distribute, simplify, and solve. Please copy these problems into your journal, stop the video, restart it when you're ready to check the solutions. Now let's look at the solutions. On the left-hand equation, we have three numbers, all of which have two decimal places. So the critical step is to multiply each side of the equation by 100 so that you'll clear both of those, uh, all, all three of those decimals. So if we multiply the left side by 100, we get 100 times the left side and 100 times the right side. 100 times 51 hundredths is 51 minus 100 times 41 hundredths is 41 equals 
1 and 12 hundredths times 100 equals 1 12. From here, it's a very familiar equation to solve, and I know that you can do that on your own. And please take the time in your journal to check to see that 3 is the correct answer. On the equation on the right, we notice that the coefficient of x has one decimal place, but the other two numbers have three. So in order to clear all three decimals, we need to multiply each side of the equation by 1,000. So we do that in this first step, distribute, and then 1,000 times 1 1.3 is 1,300 x, minus 1,000 times 0.427 is 427 equals negative 3,027, which is negative 3 and 27 thousandths times 1,000. And from here, it's a standard solution. You add 427 to each side, divide by 1,300, and you've got your solution. And once again, I invite you to check the solution by hand in your journal. Now, as a final step, if you've already copied this table into your journal, I'd like you to make sure that you list clearing fractions and clearing decimals as things that you can do accomplished by multiplying both sides of an equation by equal amounts.